welcome Mina Arajärvi from the uh, Ministry of Finance in Finland. And uh, I, I kind of coached Mina to come here because I know, knew that I would get the <laughs> European Commission uh, guys. Yeah, and I thought that this would be making such a great combination, these talks. So uh, Mina, you're going to talk about uh, why and how API policies and guidelines are needed for the Finnish public administration. Um, and I, th I think that the floor is yours. So take it away, Mina. Thank you, Mariukka, so much. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. First, I want to thank you for this great opportunity and possibility to participate for this event and speak about the API policies for, for Finland's public administration. So my name is Mina Rajarvi, and I work as a senior specialist in the Ministry of Finance in Finland. And uh, today I'm going to tell you about the uh, API policies for Finland's public administration, and uh, especially from the point of view that how and why we are doing this. Uh, in my presentation, I will shortly tell about the background for this work and also uh, why we are doing this and what are the goals uh, for the API policies. And then I will also show the preliminary uh, API policies and uh, tell a little bit about the schedule for, for this work. Uh, so. I have um, experience in the field of data management and in the Ministry of Finance I work in this project called Opening Up and Using Public Data. The project was set up by the Ministry of Finance in last April and it will put into effect the aims uh, given in the government program by, uh, by promoting wider and more effective use of public data throughout society. And the project will last until December 2022. And one of the aims is uh, to promote the coherent use of data and the functions and primarily throughout APIs. So the national API policies and guidelines will be prepared and implemented in this opening up and using public data. And my responsibility in this project is uh, especially promote the interoperability of, of data and information. But why API policies for Finland public administration? Uh, first of all, I want to say that the um, APIs or or opening up data or, or uh, utilize data is not nothing new in Finland, but uh, we have a lot of uh, work to do uh, promoting interoperability and, um, and discoverability of data. And one thing that in, in this project, the aim is to, to uh, uh, like um, do this common principles for, for API development in public sector because we, we uh, usually talk about like the that we have API jungle in, in Finland in public administrations so, so the APIs are developed but, but we do, don't, do not have like common principles how to do that and how to uh, develop APIs in, in a similar way. And quite often the API development is also organization-based so that, uh, for example, different levels in the organizations do not cooperate or, or do not have like a customer-driven approach for, for the development. And uh, usually organizations, not all, <laughs> but, but uh, many doesn't uh, 
identify or understood the benefits and values that APIs can offer. And uh, that is the reason why we are preparing these API policies. And, and also uh, um, one goal is to, to enable better digital uh, ecosystems and create a shared set of uh, principles for, for API development in public administration. So we, we have um, some kind of API uh, policies in, in Finland, but they can be organization based or, or, uh, or for example, Helsinki has API policies, but, but we, we do not have like national principles how to, how to develop uh, APIs. And also the, the goals for, for uh, the policies include uh, the promotion of a customer-driven approach and the cooperation, uh, so, to, uh, so both internal and external cooperation with the stakeholders, and also the reusability of APIs, the interoperability, and also it is important to, to uh, take into account information security and data protection. And uh, the API goals uh, try to promote the quality in API development. And we believe that common principles will promote the coherent use of data and functions, and primarily through APIs. But of course, it is uh, good to remember that this kind of change and implementation of the, the uh, policies is not easy and it won't happen in one night. But I think that this is the right direction and the steps to do that. And the... Uh, API policies are divided to three levels. There's a strategic level, strategic uh, policies, tactical policies, and operational policies. So uh, it is important that the development of APIs uh, is taken into account already in the strategic level of the organization so that the API development is managed. And it is also important that uh, when acquiring an information system, the interoperability with other system must be ensured and it must be ensured <laughs> when, when the I agree, uh, acquiring is, um, when, when organization is acquiring information systems, not after that. And uh, it is also very important that the cooperation uh, is taken into uh, account in these strategic levels. Uh, collaboration also with the internal and external stakeholders. Of course, the, the uh, cooperation will be made in other levels, but uh, we think that it's, it's important to highlight already in the uh, strategic uh, level and in the strategy policies. And then the tactical level express how the APIs are managed as whole. And um, that in, includes the management model. So it is important that organizations have this management model for, for the development and, and management of APIs. And it is also important that APIs are, or they should be the primary means for, for providing and sharing data and, and functions also. And one, one of the important um, policy in, in tactical level is also that the uh, risks are identified and managed. 
And then the operational uh, policies express how to uh, develop individual API. And it is important that the APIs are created for actual needs. And this means that the need uh, and the value should be identified. And one policy is also uh, to use uh, general and open and technology independent standards, at least it's recommended. And also regular as assessment of the benefits and usability of APIs should be done. And the best practices is also in the operational level, in including documentation, tests, and so on. And reusability is also should be taken into, into account in API development. And this also includes the uh, discoverability. So, so you cannot reuse API if, if you cannot find it. And then uh, about the schedule. So uh, these preliminary API policies were completed in the end of last year. And before that, we had uh, stakeholder events. We had discussions, workshops, and so on. And uh, the first consultation round uh, concerning these preliminary API policies was in January. And after that, we had this uh, uh, stakeholder event in February. And now we are preparing detailed API policies. And in this spring, we will also have another consultation round where the uh, stakeholders can give feedback for, for the detailed API policies. And in this uh, spring, we are also uh, piloting the detailed API policies so that we can have feedback uh, from, from the practical uh, point of view and how, how the uh, policies work, uh, are they understandable, and what kind of examples the stakeholders need for implementing those policies. And this uh, spring, we will use finalizing the API policies. And at the same time, we will start creating uh, hands-on instructions. Because uh, uh, in Finland, we have uh, uh, organizations, uh, special municipalities uh, that will need uh, more in instructions and guide uh, how to how to implement these policies and then we will uh, next autumn have this uh, third consultation round for this hands-on instruction and um, then we will finalize the instructions and create also training materials so in the end of of this year, we will have the API policies, hands-on instructions, and training materi materials. At least this is the, the goal for, for this, this uh, schedule. And also at the same time that we are uh, preparing these detailed API policies and hands-on instructions, we are also uh, working on how to uh, maintenance these these API policies. But yes, thank you. And now we could take questions. Yes, uh, there are. Uh, there is quite a lot of discussion going on in the chat, so okay. I'm going to look at what what to pick out of front there, but Per is uh, asking, have you decided on a method of uh, how to assess the benefits and usability of the APIs? 
Uh, we had this. Uh, uh, do you mean how to assess after? I think the that this is kind of a KPI type of thing, or like a metrics of like if you are doing an API policy and, and therefore saying that these kinds of our APIs are good or these kinds of APIs are bad <laughs> in a way. So is there a way to measure that or measure I, the, the impact of the policies? As a, yes, as a whole? we are working on that, how to measure. But yes, yes, it's something that we have to take into account in this project, definitely. Yeah. And I, I think that that's going to be probably the hardest part. I think I think that too. I think that yeah. too. But but it is important that you know we just don't make the policies and the instructions, and then the project is over. That we yeah. and we haven't thought about these things. It's 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 important to to think about the implementation as far as we can, and also the measurement is is one uh, point of view for doing that. Exactly. Yeah, because it's it's kind of like in any kind of strategy project, if you don't measure, you don't really know uh, the, what what you got. So, and the measurement is also guiding um, everybody to kind of go to the right direction. So it's almost that you would not need anything else except the metrics. Um, so that that's an interesting point. Thank you, Per. Uh, then uh, there is just some excited comments for open and tech the independent is a must that is a good point um so i think that i, I would be interested to hear um and, and also audience please put put your answers in the chat but do you know of any other countries uh doing these api guidelines have you cross-referenced uh, with with any other countries and their work on how they are doing it Yes, yes, for example, Great Britain has done, and then uh, France has done, and Denmark has done, if I remember right. But yes, when we started this uh, project, uh, I check <laughs> like what, what other countries have, have done. And uh, we have also like uh, used the um, guidelines that other country has done also like the we have utilized a, a API framework and and other documentation that that these um, guidelines would not be in in conflict with them. Yeah. So so yes, we have like uh, checked what what the other countries has done. Yeah, and, and I think there is some very interesting work done, uh, obviously, in Netherlands too. We heard some really great cases in, in uh, APDS Paris and Singapore is, of course, quite far on this. So I think that that yeah. sounds like a good plan that you guys are having. So uh, then there is a few uh, comments here. So <laughs> yes, Eric, it is probably a um, bit hard to measure the citizen satisfaction to APIs, but have you had plans about that? Uh, we have not had plans so far, but yes, that's a very good point, Eric. Mm -hmm. I, I also posted in the chat a few um, minutes ago about like how does the private sector, if there are any, any from um, the private sector companies there and and how does this look to them so Hema is commenting that looks really good and helps us as vendors also to drive the change inside public organizations and i think that that is a very big part of it because obviously public sector buys a lot of stuff with apis yes. or api development from private sector so you can't kind of live without that uh combination That's uh, have you, you you had uh, some rounds of of feedback and, and some some events. So I, I was also there. Thank you for inviting. But but have you had any other kind of feedback from the private sector around uh, these guidelines? Actually, not yet. But we are working on this uh, cooperation thing with the private sector. Yeah. Yes. I think that, I mean, it could even help the private sector. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, I think so too. To yes, their APIs yes. uh, and, and also how to offer you services. Um, then there's something around the uh, kind of Poland has something uh, done 
for around PSD2, says Monsin, that's great, great insight. And then Vladimir is asking, do you think about some tools for general audience to access public services from one trusted place, like from public library, uh, 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 books uh, with QR code? I know, Vladimir, this is your pet thing, these books and, and QR codes, but I think there is a kind of a bigger question there. So um, have you decided or have you discussed any other kind of tools or libraries or uh, SDKs or, or portals or anything else to kind of supplement this um, work with the guidelines? Uh, we haven't decided uh, yet, but yes, I think that this is a part of this uh, process where we have to think think about these things also. And uh, actually, one of the thing is also that um, uh, we have to working work that on is the question that how applicational these uh, policies will be. Yeah. Yeah. Because that will affect uh, different way if if these policies are just like principles, so so then uh, like the measurement is also different. But if if some of these policies will be like uh, applicational, so that will yeah. will different things. And I think that that that's always the hard part. Like uh, I was working uh, like the hardest project I was working with was like when the Finnish legislation around the traffic uh, APIs that had to be opened by all the traffic operators was set and, and it was really, really hard because there was the legislation that had some very high level requirements on, on what kind of API mm. should be opened uh, uh, and why. But then, of course, everybody in the field was crying out like, hey, <laughs> please give us something very concrete. But on the other hand, those who were maybe like more advanced uh, organizations were afraid of those really tight uh, restrictions because they were seeing them as kind of limiting their innovation and limiting uh, how fast they could move in the kind of technical roadmaps and so forth. So it's it's a hard balance. But actually, Lawrence, you know, is pointing out that regarding measuring, we have found that usually metrics are operational, uh, e.g. number of accesses, but very few has been done in evaluating the real impact of the use of the API. Mm. And and he also thanks you a lot for explaining the efforts that the Finnish government is pioneering in these metrics. But have you had any further discussions on, on what type of metrics there could possibly be? Uh, not yet, not yet. But I think that uh, in the end of this year, we will have to have some kind of idea of that. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I think that but this that's is not, that, that, that's, But that's not easy. Is it, yeah, uh, it's easy, but it's yeah. also an important point that Lorenzo yeah. is raising up because it's always easy to find those how many <laughs> kind yeah. of measurements, yeah. but yeah, but what is the impact? That's always more difficult. Um, so then Jorge is asking that uh, how can people contact you if they would have like, for example, from different um, uh, government organizations or otherwise, if you have anything there uh, and. Uh, Vladimir has gone. You already shared your email address. <laughs> okay, <That's> good. <laughs> okay, uh, but I guess uh, if if anybody has from other governments uh, or government organizations in Finland or or from elsewhere, I think that um, you might not object in <laughs> being contacted, at least from those points of view. No, of course, of course, you can contact me by email. Yes, mm -hmm. I think that that would, would be the easiest way to contact yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a, a final question from Per. Uh, have you considered making open source a must? Public sector open source promotes agency transparency and takes reusability into a new dimension as taxpayers and citizens can both learn from the public code. And I think that is kind of it, it kind of always comes up <laughs> when you talk about APA. So what is have have you had any thoughts on that? Well yeah it was open source was men, mentioned in that and actually the the open source thing is actually on my table right now. Yeah. And what what we would 
uh, should we like uh, give some kind of uh, guideline or, or some kind of policy about the the open source in 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 public administration? So we are actually working on that also <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Lots yeah. of stuff on your table. Lots of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> not, not yeah, so not small really. stuff. <laughs> exactly, and and obviously, open source kind of does sometimes solve a few additional issues, um, even though open APIs or APIs and openness of APIs are not always dependent on the open source. But yeah, but yeah. yeah I, I totally agree that it's one related thing. So hey, uh, I think the conversation is flying there still and keep it coming. I thank you, Mina, for being here and sharing uh, what's happening in the Finnish government and hope to see you in any further API days too. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity.